Hi everyone, this is Danny Gannix. We are here in Lambertville, New Jersey doing a small bathroom remodel and we are going to jump into prep and installations and before we doing that um, I would like to apologize about my accent because sometimes it's so heavy sometimes my words doesn't come the way I want it and hopefully you are not gonna have a bad time, time understanding me um, I would like to introduce one of the great installer, a friend of mine, which is unbelievable and he's gonna explain you what we are doing right now he's going to be the uh, installer in this remodel so I'm gonna be the, in the back of the camera with him going through all the steps uh, and tricks that he's gonna explain you the right way, the way it has to be done from the beginning so this is Carl and I would like to introduce yourself. Um, hi everyone, my name is Carl Leonard. My company is uh, Cutting Edge Tile out of New Jersey. Um, in this project here, we have um, we have a small bathroom. Um, it's a tub area. Uh, the tile that we're installing on the uh, on the shower walls or the tub walls is a uh, handmade uh, crackle fins um, six by six tile. Um, on the floor we have a terrazzo. Uh, it's a glaze, no, excuse me, it's a glazed terracotta, a 4x4 hexagon. Um, all these tiles have to be sealed prior to installation. Um, in our tub area, we're going to use a uh, weedy board on our tub walls. On our floor in the bathroom, we're going to use new heat, um, electric radiant heat, which is uh, 110, um, 110 volt. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that on the floor in the bathroom. The floor is out of level, so we're going to use Artex um, uh, LBB, LBB, and, LBB and we're going to uh, adhere all our tile with Artex X77 thin set. Um, so we're using all the very good products that we're using um, so we can ensure the client has a long lasting. Uh, quality installation, no issues. Um, you know, we're using 100% silicone and all that change of plane. Um, we're using all stain resisting grouts. So there's a lot of things that separate us from the other guys. Um, we're also certified to use certain products like Weedy, like Schluter, uh, like Artex, like New Heat. There's a lot of different products that we're certified to use because we educate ourselves. We're members of the National Tile Contractor Association. Um, I'm a certified tile installer. So there's a lot of things that separate us from the other guys um, that will, you'll definitely see a big difference from what we do and how we do it than your typical uh, tile installer um, out here. And uh, we're gonna show you how we do it, what we do, different tricks, different tips on, and different methods. Um, the correct way to go about this process so that at the end of the job I can ensure the client is going to love their bathroom love their installation for many many years down the line and the only phone call that we should be getting is a referral or hey we've got another project for you to do we love the work you do and at the end of the day that's all the client wants so we want to go ahead and give them uh, they, their dreams. They can dream it, we can do it, we'll make it happen. Um, so that's a little bit about, about what we're going to do in this project. So stay tuned. Uh, we have many more exciting things for you. Um, many things that I'm pretty sure that everyone can learn from and uh, you know just watch us. Yep. Before we go into the video to show you all the steps and preps, uh, what I wanted to mention is we do not get nothing from all of those manufacturers. We are not get paid for, uh, from, for what we are doing. Um, and then another thing is uh, about warranties. Um, that's a big thing. Uh, we are certified to install all those products, but before any of those warranties, uh, who is going to be called if something goes wrong, right? It's us. We are. We are. Right. So, if we are not doing the right way, and if, if we are not believing those products, the way are performing, the way it has to be installed, the way um, 
are you know lasting you know maybe you're gonna question yourself sometimes is this product gonna work is this product is going to last and believe me or not we are installing those products in our homes so for doing that i will not install something which i not trust or not believe in it um, so these are things which you guys have to understand and that's why we are doing those videos with a lot of products um, some of the jobs are going to be small some of the jobs are going to be fancier larger but for you i will hope you are going to understand the way those product works so let's jump into the video let's jump into the installations stay tuned all right okay guys so um as i mentioned earlier uh we have a uh, crackle finish six by six um handmade tile uh, on the walls and in the bathroom and on the floor we have a, um, uh, a terracotta glazed terracotta uh, 4x4 hexagon and when I said to you it's very important that you go ahead and seal the material prior to installing uh, it's very important especially with the crackle finish or or handmade tiles uh, the glaze is very fragile and if you have any um, uh, oils or other products on your hands uh, you can actually ruin the material uh, marks won't come off of it it will get embedded into the glaze um, another thing is if your client is using uh, a contrasting grout such as black or anything other than the color of the tile it can get etched into the crackle finish so what we do ahead of time is take the time and seal it uh, the product that we're using today is ocean care products it's a high performance penetrating sealer uh, it's a great product low odor low vocs residue and protects the grout and porous uh, surfaces this is a great product to use um and it's eco-friendly um so it won't go ahead and, and and you know bother your your client with smells and and heavy chemicals um what i'm using is a microfiber cloth i go ahead and saturate it um and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and, and, and lay it on heavy. And if you can hear these tiles, you'll hear a crackle. And that's because the material is actually sucking in all this sealer. It's actually getting baked in there. And it's going into the pores. If you listen very carefully, I'll go ahead and be quiet. You can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it pretty interesting uh, but that's another another thing that you know you'll know that it is actually getting in there and I'm not just putting something over the surface of the material okay um, what I like to do is put a nice heavy coat and uh, let it dry up uh, this is a handmade tile so what's the difference between a uh, rectified tile, for example, oh. with a handmade one. Okay, so so a handmade tile, and what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'll grab you a piece that isn't already sealed, and I can actually show you uh, the difference. I'll take two of them. Okay, and I'll show you the difference between a handmade tile. Handmade tile has more of a rough cut to it. Um, it it's going to have variation in size. It's going to have variation in shape a little bit um the edges will not actually be be really clean some of the edges will actually taper out um you'll get imperfections in size um and in shape if, as you see here when i put these two together you see the opening is a little bit wider here and here so it is definitely it, this is definitely not a material for the novice um you have to understand and 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 also let your client understand that there is a uh, high variation is going to be in, in your grout lines um in your spacing it is a little bit more of a challenge to install this um i'm up for the challenge uh i actually like working with stuff like this because it has so much character to it um you know again you can you can see it right here is as far as the different sizes and shapes and this is only two tiles so just imagine a wall full of them but a lot of clients they like this and this is why they pick it is because it has that extra character and a variation um so I like it. I think it's going to come out great. Um, I'm excited to actually start installing this. And uh, but these are the steps that we have to uh, take in order to get to that level, um, the stage where we're going to be installing it. 
So uh, stay tuned. We got a couple more things to show you guys uh, before we start installing. So uh, look out. In this tub area, um, we went ahead and uh, uh, thin set our boards onto our weedy boards. These are half inch weedy boards. Uh, these are thermal, they're waterproof, and they're mold proof, mold resistant. <music> ahead and uh, affix these onto the walls with our fasteners and our screws. In between every board when we put it, one board in conjunction with the next board we use weedy sealant. We also did a bead of sealant where your boards meet your tub ledge uh, and the flange. got done all that we went ahead and I uh, went ahead and sealed all the corners all the fasteners in any area that is going to be subjected to water so in any of our wet areas we went ahead and made sure that everything is nice and watertight over here at your uh, your shower your tub uh, valve and all the the spout and the shower head we went ahead and put uh, sleeves on them so right now I'm, I'm putting on, I just adhered the mixing valve collar, okay? And that's gonna prevent any water backing up behind the tile. And then along any of the tub spout and your shower head, I wanna go ahead and put these, put these, uh, these gaskets on here. And what they're gonna do is just make sure that everything is watertight. I'll go ahead and set these with thin set the same way I set the boards on the walls um, and make sure that everything is nice and sealed up really tight. Um, this is a step that a lot of people will omit. These aren't really expensive and to make everything 100% watertight, we'll go ahead and install these in, on all our showers and our tub areas. Beautiful. So for, for instance, for example, when you have, as you see here, there is a crust. What you have to do is just grab your knife and go right around, around mm -hmm. the so you make them flat nice and smooth okay. do not leave any any, any of those voids, voids. right right and beautiful very very easy to do. Just go around there like that and now to press that in and we're good to go
supposed to fit nice and snug around the pipe. everything in here 100% watertight um, all the way around the bottom here if you notice and at the ceiling um, another note another thing that we did is here we had a metal corner bead so what I wanted to do because everyone knows if you've ever ripped out a shower and it has a, a corner bead in it a metal one you'll notice that it is rusted because water and moisture get to it. So what I did is I went ahead and went over top of the whole corner bead, which will ensure that there won't be any moisture that will get to it and it will not rot out. So everything in here is 100% um, sealed up and watertight. And uh, we are now able to go ahead and install tile. If we wanted to install tile today, we could. With this product, there is no downtime. I can basically installed within two hours once this sealant right here is uh, is dry so it usually takes around two hours depending on the uh, the temperature um, and, and this is it we're all ready to go We are installing okay so so right now I'm gonna go I'm, I'm uh, installing the new heat track and what this is allowing me to do is to string my my wire for my electric radiant heat um, over top of the plywood so that this wire is going to be loosely strung in here um, and then what we'll do is we'll come through and I'll do a foam barrier all the way around the perimeter, around these pipes, and any area where once we pour our uh, self-leveler, the, the self-leveler won't drip into the ceiling below and, and cause damage. So what we'll do is we'll go around and, and do a foam perimeter all the way around, any crevices all the way around. Then what we'll do after we do that, I'll go ahead and prime the plywood. In this situation, I'm using uh, Ardex, uh, liquid backer board, which is a self leveler uh, underlayment. Um, but first, we have to prime it with what's called P51 primer. So we'll go ahead and prime the floor P51, and then I can go ahead and once that is set up, I can go ahead and mix my liquid backer board uh, and uh, pour the floor. Within three hours, I can actually walk on it. Um, what this product is going to do is we're going to be able to level the floor and not have to put any other type of underlayment over top of it. Normally, if you pour self-leveler over top of a plywood substrate, you need to use another kind of underlayment, uh, be it uncoupling membrane or, or, or otherwise, over top of it. This product is actually uh, allows you to do both. Um, so you can pour from one eighth of an inch thick up to an inch and a quarter. Um, so that's the product that we're going to use in this situation because it meets all of our criteria um, to give the uh, to give you know to give the the homeowner um, a long lasting um, you know floor and also eliminates us having to come in and do extra unnecessary steps. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing here right now. I'm just going to go ahead and finish screwing these down, get this get this all straight here, and then I'm going to uh, read the floor and get a plot and then go from there.
next step what we are doing uh next step so right now i'm going to go ahead and this is our ardex p51 primer this primer is uh for priming over top of uh, porous substrates okay use it straight up don't dilute it what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pour some on the substrate right now and spread it out making sure that the plywood is absorbing it um, that way we know that we are primed really well I'm actually doing that with a sponge okay you can do it with a roller a sponge I like to do um, that's pretty much it wire system um, I went ahead and put the tracks in earlier okay and then I went ahead and um, st uh, strung my wire excuse me strung my wire um, with this system you can go uh, two three two system um, whereas other systems you have to go every three inches this one you can actually go three two three two um, I went ahead and did all that uh, ran the wire ran the thermostat probe in the middle here which is fastened here um, I also checked the resistance and the ohms on the uh, for our wiring before I um, before I go ahead and, and give the okay to go ahead and cover the floor up um, it's recommended that you go ahead and test it I tested it uh, already uh, before I actually strung the wire I went ahead and tested it and then after I strung the wire I tested it again just to make sure that everything is okay um, another precaution that we, we use on this system is we use this, which is a loudmouth. And this is what, what this right here is going to do is detect any break in the system. So for instance, it's already on. If I were to break a wire and there's a break in the circuit, because it should be a complete circuit, you will get a buzz. Once you close that circuit, it will go ahead and turn off on you. So this is just as a precaution. I still recommend that if you do a heating system, an electric heating system, that you do go ahead and check the wires um, if you're gonna have the wires exposed. It is very good practice, and uh, no one likes to have a heated floor and tile over top of it. That doesn't work. You're in trouble then. You have to do it all over. Um, so being that this floor is out of level, uh, I already have the floor primed. Everything is set up for me to pour my Ardex LBB um, liquid backer board over top of it. Being that I'm also using it as a leveler in here, what I did is I went ahead and used my six foot level and I found out where the highest point in the floor is. Okay, so from there, what I did is I took my six foot level, the highest point of the floor is at the doorway. I took my six foot level and I brought it to level here. So I use an alkaline resistant screw. It's very important that you use an alkaline resistant screws and I'm using these to guide my pour. So when I go ahead and pour my floor, I will go from the lowest area to the tip, the top of this screw here. And as you see, I have another one over here. I have them sporadically all around the room um, as a guide for myself when I go ahead and pour the floor, I don't have to do any measuring or anything else like that. Being that this floor is all over the place, uh, I want to go ahead and put those in place so that it makes my job a lot easier and pretty much dummy proof, okay? So it's another little tip that things that we do um, to go ahead and ensure that everything is going to be okay. Um, so right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this mix going. I'm going to go ahead and pour this floor then I'll come back tomorrow for the next step. This is the end of the first day and then we are going back into the project the next day which is tomorrow and then we're gonna show you more things and tricks and tips the way it has to be done and the way we are doing it. Alrighty, see you next time.
<laughs> oh my god. Back again? Oh my god. Okay. Alrighty. Hi everyone, this is Danny Yannix. <laughs> I bleh 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 bleh. <laughs> wait, wait, we got a whole bunch of cut. Cut. <laughs> Take so. 69. <laughs> That's a good Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Why? Vain. Take 172. <laughs> no, it doesn't, uh, it's not recording, so. No, not no, yet. That okay. one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>